Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey, and today we're going to discuss heart attacks or heart disease, and more specifically we're going to talk about your cholesterol and controlling your cholesterol on cycle. And this directly links to plaque buildup and the whole atherosclerosis. Um, so I thought this was quite an important video because of all the cardiovascular incidents happening in the bodybuilding industry at the moment. While some are unknown and we are unsure of the cause, we do know that most have been atherosclerosis related, which is plaque buildup essentially in the arteries. So we are going to discuss how you can treat that if you have high levels, because most individuals on steroids will have skewed lipids. Uh, orals affect it more so than injectables, but at the same time, it's, they're still going to be skewed in most individuals. And lifestyle measures do work, but to a certain extent. So this video is just going to talk about therapeutic options. So essentially medical intervention. Um, so this topic is important because it is quite well known that under certain levels, I think it's 2 millimoles per liter or 80 something milligrams per deciliter that of LDL, that plaque buildup is not really possible and below this reversal is actually, does occur in some instances. Again, this guide is for steroid users only and this is all about risk reduction or oh, harm reduction so um because statins are known to decrease muscular performance and strength however if you're taking exogenous hormones the effect is probably mu much less pronounced i'm not only going to talk about statins i'm also going to talk about azetamide or mib um but we'll mostly be focusing on statins because whilst there is a benefit to decreasing your LDL with azetamide, though the access to it is quite limited um, and it's quite over commercialized. So it's one of the more expensive treatments. It's not incredibly expensive, but I've had an email from someone saying, what can he do because he doesn't have access to it because they don't sell it close to him. So, and not only that, azetamide shouldn't be first line necessarily. It, it can be if you only have slightly skewed LDL levels, but the problem is the primary outcomes have never really been, are, are still yet to be shown. So the problem is it, whilst it does decrease LDL, it very rarely decreases that to the therapeutic level that statins are able to correct it to because it's a bit variable in its results and whilst it does decrease myocardial infarction it doesn't reduce the uh, the incidence of cardiovascular mortality or morbidity oh, well morbidity I don't know about that but it doesn't improve death so furthermore statins should be included because they have these cholesterol independent pleiotrophic effects so there are other benefits to them besides the fact that they lower cholesterol quite aggressively, such as stabilizing plaque um, development, decreasing the uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines or chemokines that tend to worsen the effect and cause a possible abruption of the plaque or worsening of the plaque. So this guide is also just for steroid users because in terms of using a statin in a non-steroid user, just in the general population, it's found that the risk of having a heart attack, or I think it was dying of a heart attack, you'll have to correct me on that, for a non-statin user compared to a statin user, the relative risk was 36% higher in the non-statin using individuals. However, in absolute terms, if you looked at these studies, the risk, uh, the, abs the absolute risk of dying of a heart attack for a non-statin user compared to a statin user 
um, was 3% in the non-statin user and 2% in the statin user. So that's the, important to look at relative risk versus absolute risk because they reported the relative risk and not the absolute risk. There is a bit of influence there from possible outside sources. So the recommendations for statins in non-steroid uh, users are just normal individuals. I'm not too sure about nor am I too convinced unless obviously you have reason to be, um, such as risk factors. Um, so these recommendations I'm going to make are just to ensure safety on cycle and possibly if you're cruising because even at a cruise you still may have those skewed lipids and since statins do come with their side effects, um, which are type 2 diabetes, it is slight, it, it causes slight lizard, liver toxicity, as well as the well-reported muscular or my, uh, <laughs> muscular side effects. We'd like to minimize these side effects, especially if you are using a statin and you want the benefits from them, but not the side effects, because the side effects are underreported in the literature. Um, in clinical settings, it tends to be a lot higher than that in reported in the literature. So since we want to reduce these side effects, we need to look at what causes these side effects. And it appears that a higher total weekly dosage of the drug or of the statin tends to cause a higher chance of one developing the type 2 diabetes and side effects. So this led me to thinking, what about intermittent dosing? So essentially not dosing every day, but um, dosing every other day or a few times a week in order to minimize your weekly dosage and reduce the side effects because it would theoretically work since whilst statins do have half-lives of 10 to 19 hours, um, this would this would um, support using a daily doses. However, its effect on its downstream effects on HMG co-reductase tend to last three days, uh, up to three days or two days. So theoretically, you could use an intermittent dosing protocol. And there are many observational studies done on this protocol. However, observational observational studies are unable to prove. Um, causation. They can show correlation and thing, but they're unable to prove causation, so we actually have to put it to the test, as some doctors say, and put it in a randomized control trial. But in fact, we have something even better than that. We have a meta-analysis and sy uh, systematic review of this. So this study I'm going to refer to is the efficacy and safety of alternate day dosing versus daily dosing of statins. So the study didn't really look at whether it caused fewer side effects, which is what we would like. It just looked at whether different dosages or whether different dosing schematics changed the LDL cholesterol. And they found that in this study that atorvastatin and rosuvastatin, when compared to their daily dosing versus their alternate daily dosing, was as effective as, as daily dosing when it came to lowering triglycerides and LDL cholesterol. It didn't reduce total cholesterol to the extent of daily dosing, however, LDL cholesterol tends to be a more important marker, so essentially we can decrease um, LDL cholesterol to the same point as daily dosing if we use alternate daily dosing whilst we're using essentially half of the dosage per week. So let's look at another way we could possibly decrease that dose even further, the dose of the statin I mean. And in this they, study we are going to look at now, they did co-administration with azitamide. And as we see, there were three different groups, and the co-administration group, atorvastatin and azitamide, were compared against rosuvastatin and atorvastatin. This is a randomized control trial. There's no placebo, but they were just comparing it to different treating um, regimens. And they managed to show that all treatment strategies 
in this study were as efficacious as each other. However, the rosuvastatin and 10 milligrams daily and the 5 milligrams atorvastatin and 5 milligrams ezetimibe had more favorable outcomes. So they re they not only reduced LDL but they tended to improve the LDL HDL ratio as well as did had no significant change on HbA1c which is a marker of glucose control long-term glucose control and as we said type 2 diabetes does occur from these statins however and there was no impairment of glucose uh, tolerance however in the atorvastatin 20 milligrams group there was a bit of deterioration in that aspect so it would seem that you could further decrease the dose with the addition of azidamide, and this is actually shown in another meta-analysis and systematic review. They found that adding on azidamide was more effective than doubling the dose of a statin. So where am I going with this? So essentially, we found that the 5 milligram atorvastatin 5 milligram azidamide group was as effective as the 10 milligram rosuvastatin group. And so you're already using a lower dose, 5 milligrams of atorvastatin is quite low, but if, if we remember the first study I mentioned, it found that with atorvastatin or rosuvastatin, alternate day, uh, alternate day dosing was almost as effective as daily dosing. So you could decrease the dose even more by doing 5 milligrams of azetamide daily with 5 milligrams of atorvastatin every other day. And this was actually done in a study. In the study, azetamide was used by itself at uh, 10 milligrams daily, I think, and it showed its uh, reduced LDL cholesterol by 20%, which is the most commonly reported figure in the literature. And with the addition of atorvastatin at 10 milligrams only twice a week, they, there was the reduction in LDL was almost double. So that, again, proves that you can use this alternate daily dosing uh, scheme. But the problem is, as we mentioned at the beginning, is that not everyone has access to azetamide. And whilst combining the two is very effective, it's as effective as the rosuvastatin uh, at 10 milligrams a day, which means that 10 milligrams a day or every other day would be as efficacious and therefore you could use that instead and use a lower dose of a rosuvastatin a week. And there are studies that look at just rosuvastatin, however they're observational and quite small, but they did pr show favorable outcomes, but we can't conclude much from them. But there are limitations to what I've said above, and that's because they only looked at LDL. They looked at the LDL value and not many other markers of atherosclerosis and things that would are important for the outcome of someone uh, with cardiovascular disease. So they didn't look at platelet activation markers after stimulation, platelet aggregation, plasma chemokine levels, which are also important in preventing the development of plaque as well as just atherosclerosis and that critical stenosis where a vessel occludes. So if your LDL is your concern, this protocol would work. However, we don't know about its how effective it would be in clinical practice since it does uh, since the platelet markers and things like that were not looked at and using a lower dose of a statin statins being the most effective drug at reducing cardiovascular events, this would tend to show that maybe it wouldn't reduce cardiovascular resent, uh, events, although it does reduce LDL cholesterol. But we don't know, since that hasn't really been looked at. They haven't really done too many long-term studies, and the long-term studies are never long-term, they're about five years. So in summary, Alternate day dosing appears to be as effective as daily dosing of, in atorvastatin and rosuvastatin, and the addition of azetamide should be consi uh, considered instead of upscaling your dose if you do have access to azetamide. So the best protocol would be 5 milligrams of azetamide daily with either 10 milligrams of atorvastatin twice a week or 5 milligrams of atorvastatin every other day. 
if you don't have ex access to Zetamib, remember Rosuvastatin was as effective as the um, if Rosuvastatin was as effective as the five milligram five milligram group. So Rosuvastatin at ten milligrams every other day could be as effective with supposedly limited side effects. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you learned something from it and let me know what you think if you agree with what I said and if you didn't and I'll see you in the next one.